Black leg, as most growers will know, is a devastating disease of canola. It's obviously wiped out the industry a couple of times in Australia. However, if we get all the management right, we can grow good, healthy, profitable crops. One of the key ways to control black leg in canola is through genetic resistance in our cultivars. However, it's not totally simple because the breeding companies are constantly updating and changing the genetics in their cultivars. At the same time, the black leg pathogen, which is sexually reproducing, is evolving to overcome the resistance in our cultivars. And that's why, as an industry, we need to know what the resistance in our cultivars is. We need to know what the black leg pathogen in the field is doing. And then we need to put the best management plan in place to reflect that knowledge. So what we're doing here in the glasshouse at the moment is working out which resistance genes are in each cultivar so that we can give that information back to industry. So in these experiments, these cultivars have been screened for the major gene resistance. Now major gene resistance is a gene for gene interaction. So if the gene in the plant recognises that it's been attacked by the black leaf fungus, it turns on its defence mechanism and you get an immune response. So no disease can get into the plant at all and the plants are perfectly safe from black leaf. However, because it's only a single gene, and the black leg, as I said before, is sexually reproducing, the black leg can overcome this resistance quite quickly. And in the field, we see a new resistance gene will last somewhere between three to five years before the black leg overcomes that resistance. So what we're doing in these experiments is we know all the genes, all the major genes, which are currently available in Australian canola cultivars, and we've got black leg isolates which can either attack those major genes or not attack them on an individual basis and we can infect all the plants with all these different strains of black leg and we can look, look at the pattern of infection we get. As I said, it's an all or nothing effect. So the cotyledons either become totally diseased or they remain completely clean. And from that pattern, we can infer which resistance genes are in each cultivar. And that's really, really important knowledge for the grower because once you know what the gene is, we can classify our cultivars into different resistance groups. And then if you're growing a particular cultivar and you know, for instance, it's group A, and you see over a number of years, the black leg population on your farm has evolved to overcome the resistance. If you want to swap cultivars, you can now swap to a different group. Whereas in the past, you may have inadvertently grown another group A cultivar with the same resistance, and then you would have the same black leg problems. And what we've seen in the field is that if you grow a particular resistance gene, the black leaf population will actually shift its frequency to be able to attack that resistance gene. And then over time, that will get overcome. But as it attacks one resistance gene, it actually becomes less virulent than other resistance genes. So if you are a group A grower, you are losing resistance. From the knowledge that we have here now, you can choose a cultivar from a different resistance group, which you know when you grow it will actually have a lot less disease than your current group A cultivar, for instance. So that's what we're doing, and that's how we do it. It's a lot of um, mundane work, but it's a really simple, reliable system, and um, it's been working well for a number of years now. So the black leg resistance groups, which are generated from this knowledge, are available on the GADC black leg management guide, which is on the GADC website, or very simple to Google. And it's also available in the new black leg CM app, which we've developed in recent years.